This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Ghost buildings in Chernookville are going to cost an estimated $1 billion to sort out. Illegal pharmacists face a crackdown after recent deaths. And our crime desk today has the body count just mounting. But firstly, our headline story, and it's all about those ghost buildings in Chernookville that are blighting the landscape. There are over 360 high-rise buildings that now stand as empty shells. And the government is taking action to try and bring some form of resolution to a problem that has stood for years. But the answer is most unwelcome, as the amount of money needed to solve this issue is money they simply do not have. The Deputy Governor told us at the Khmer Times this week that $1 billion needs to be raised to complete more than 360 major building projects in Priya Shirnuk province. And rather worryingly, he said, I do not believe that the government has any budget for this, as there are so many other priorities that have to be addressed. The aim, he says, is to classify the unfinished projects to see which should be referred to a criminal lawsuit and to see which projects will be laboratory tested to examine how safe each building actually is. Now that sentiment brings me very neatly to what would be my major concern and that is, are these buildings safe? For if they are not, then absolutely nobody will want to buy them. And there is only one option left, and that is a very costly demolition. I went to an engineer and I asked him what would be the number one concern he would have with these structures. He did not even pause for thought. As quick as a flash, he said, it's the concrete. For if the concrete was not tested prior to it being poured, the buildings could be exceedingly dangerous. He added, in his experience, if any electrical work has been done, then that would be the next in line for checking. And all these factors must be scientifically examined, and that will take an awful lot of time and money. Simply put, he said, Without full and extensive testing, he would not buy one of these buildings for a single dollar. As all one may end up with for their money is a building that is unsafe and must be demolished at a huge expense. This week on our crime desk, a trilogy of death. A wizard is murdered. A man takes an axe to his wife and another man attempts suicide with his three-year-old child. A wizard who was blessed with the ability to see the future and to tell others their fortunes has been murdered. He was killed by a 51-year-old female she was detained in connection with the death of the fortune teller, which had occurred in a room at a guest house in Phnom Penh. The woman's aim was very simple and very clear. She did not want her fortune told, but wanted the fortune of the wizard. So she killed him by suffocating him with a pillow, and when dead, she stole his jewellery and his cash. The crime, though, was ill-conceived, for she had been seen by staff at the hotel. When arrested, she faced charges of murder and a long term in jail. And it is usually right here that this tale would end. But there is more, for she, in fact, will spend no time in jail, as tragically she hung herself in a police cell and took her own life. 
in this next case, a man attempted to take his own life in the most horrific way possible after a barbaric crime. A man has been arrested after hacking his wife to death with an axe and then setting himself on fire whilst in a drunken fury. Reports tell of how the incident unfolded. Police stated that the 44-year-old man attacked his wife and killed her. The crime was horrifying. The man had drunk to excess and became enraged with his wife. In the heat of the argument, he picked up an axe and struck her multiple times, killing her in a most savage manner. But slowly, the gravity of his crime seemed to sink in, and seeing no way out, he doused himself with petrol and then set himself alight. Despite being in a critical condition in hospital, doctors say he will live to face trial. And now we have another attempted suicide. This time, a man who was looking to kill not only himself, but also a three-year-old child by throwing the child and himself off a bridge in central Phnom Penh. Fortunately, his erratic behavior was noted and police managed to stop the man from jumping off the bridge with his son. The police identified the man as a farmer from Kandal province. The cause for this attempted suicide was not alcohol this time, but drugs. The reason the man attempted to kill himself and murder his own three-year-old child was, he said, was that he was upset that his wife had gone to work in Phnom Penh and he felt she was neglecting the family. So he got high on drugs, stole a motto from a family member, drove to the bridge, and was all prepared to kill himself and his young child. That was until the police stepped in, and fortunately brought the insanity to an end. Authorities have been intensifying their crackdowns on illegal pharmacies and private clinics. And let's face the facts here, that is of no real surprise, for we of late have seen numerous deaths at the hands of people who say that they are qualified medical practitioners, but in fact know bugger all about medicine or medical procedures. On this show, we have covered some of those deaths, but there are so many more that we have not reported on. Each and every one of them is wholly avoidable. Well, now action is being taken to stop this tally of death rising any further. Health authorities have cracked down on illegal pharmacies in numerous locations and shut down private clinics for trading illegally. The health ministry closed one pharmacy after it was found to be selling illegal traditional medicines. And these medicines are prepared with no scientific method. And they can even prove to be fatal. One pharmacy had been fined for distributing and selling traditional medicines without a license, even though it had been previously raided. And if that was not bad enough, it was discovered the pharmacy had even opened two new centres secretly without permission. It also transpired that the Su Seng Pharmacy had been posting on Facebook about cures for chronic diseases and how their traditional medicines, probably knocked up in a bucket in the back room, could cure all ills. Now, we do not know exactly what these pseudo-medicines were advertised as curing, but in the past, it has been noted, incredible claims have been made that these under-the-counter concoctions will cure you of everything from high blood pressure to terminal cancer and even AIDS. About now, 
You may well be thinking, well, why would somebody believe such utter nonsense? Why would someone be willing to digest a medicine that has been concocted by someone with a very dubious medical background? Well, there are in fact two main reasons. The first, of course, is tradition. As these kind of medicines are widely spread, and more so in the countryside, but it is the second reason that is way more sinister. It is because the patient is so very desperate. So desperate that they will try anything. For they do not have the luxury of being able to afford high-end care or high-end medicines. And into this gap steps these quack doctors and these illegal pharmacists, who will not only risk their patients' lives, but also have killed, just so they can make a fast buck. Let us finish this week with something astonishing from nature to lighten the mood somewhat. Some months ago, a giant stingray was caught in the Mekong, in a remote area of Cambodia. Now, what makes this catch so very special is this giant stingray has now been recognised as the largest man has ever seen. And as such, it makes its way into the Guinness Book of World Records. Now, what I love about this story is oh so often, we hear about local ecology and of its doom and gloom. But for once, it's so very reassuring to know that underneath those murky waters, undiscovered giants still dwell, and they can amaze us all. A giant freshwater stingray caught by a fisherman when it ate a fish that was already hooked on his line, thinking... He was hauling in a regular sized fish. The fisherman got the shock of his life. Now at this point, it is worth remembering about local folklore. You know, about ghosts and demons and so on. Because one has to imagine what went through that fisherman's mind as he hauled in this monster from the deep. He must have been astonished and probably a little frightened for what he found has never been seen by another human being, and that is the world's largest stingray, and in fact is now in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's largest freshwater fish. It was a staggering 660 pounds in weight. Assessed by scientists from the US Cambodian Wonders of the Mekong Project, the fish had a disc width of over seven feet, and its length was a staggering 13 feet. Locals gave the fish the most wonderful name. They called it Boromi, which means full moon. Now, how cool is that when it comes to naming a giant fish in the shape of a disc? It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. And here it is. If we look at this headline that we ran earlier this week in the Khmer Times, it says absolutely everything. Low pressure system to bring rain to Cambodia. Now, what the government did was they actually issued another statement saying, be careful this very day. It's going to be a big storm. And do you know what? Oh, man, oh, man, did it rain. They were absolutely spot on. Now, as I just pad, and oh, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. It's the actual weather chart itself. And what you see is there's thunder and lightning back on the old menu. Uh, In the midweek, it's going to be wet across the board, but to what level? That's the thing. I don't think we're going to get these big storms that we had earlier. We have the humidity in the mid-50s. There is a gentle wind, but most certainly, you'll be wise to carry a raincoat. This has been the Khmer Times News. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. 
This has been Paolo Bonini, and that was the week that was. I'll see you next weekend for your weekly roundup.